All right, so in this video, we are going to take a look at one of the cool updates that came with the recent update of Studio One version 6.1. I think it's 6.1.1 as of the time that I'm doing this video. Let's navigate to the same area over here. I have my video track open. We are going to click, hold, and drag our video file into the video track. One of the big changes that we see here now, looks a little bit different in the GUI, but we have this right over here. This is really important and this is super useful. So in terms of how I'm setting this up, nothing has really differed from how I was doing it in version six and in the original video that I posted when version six launched. But what we do have is that second point of verification, which is basically ensuring us that the embedded time code frame rate burn in on the video or in the video matches exactly at any given point of our timeline. What do I mean by this? Okay, so I'm gonna set this up relatively the same way that I did the previous video. Let's also drag in our two pop because that's gonna come in useful. And what I'll do is I'm gonna bring this right back to the very beginning of the session. Now let's close our browser and I'm going to open up my secondary ruler and let's make sure that that is set to frames. Now we went over a couple settings in the first video. We might as well touch upon those again. First and foremost, this feature over here from video. If you're not sure what frame rate your video is, all you have to do is click from video and it will automatically extract that frame rate and apply it to your current song. And then as stated in the previous video, we have a preference in the video tab under advanced, set song frame rate to video frame rate when importing video file. So the minute you import it, it will automatically do this for you. I would just always leave that on. I don't think there's ever a reason why you wouldn't want to have that on. Okay, so what's changed in terms of my workflow now that we have this new feature? Well, what I used to do is I would always set my secondary counter to frames because I would, I would need to see at any given point of time, I would need to be able to see a time code, a SMPTE time code frame rate that I can match against the video. And also one thing I want to kind of clear up is in the previous video that I did, I kept on saying frame rate when I was referring to this area over here. Frame rate is what is in the video. So we have different frame rates. It can be 23.976. It can be true 24, true 25. Uh, it can be 29.97 drop frame. It can be 29.97, 30. It can be 50. It can be 60. So these are the different frame rates that videos have. And the easiest way to explain this is think about a notepad. And let's say in a true 30 frames per second timeline, that if I had 30 pages and I went through them and each of those pages had an image on it, and if I could do, if I could go through them and take exactly one second to go through it, that's the amount of images, still frames that are stacked upon each other. Now, obviously, if we took a look at 60, that would be double. We would have twice as many images. So that's really all I'm going to get into in terms of frame rate over here. But now we have a time code reference and the time code changes depending on the frame rate. So the time code is what I used to always set up over here. But now that we have it in the video file, I actually don't feel the need to set this Unless I want to, I don't feel the absolute need to be able to, to need to set this to SMPTE in order to have a reference for where I am in my project. Okay, so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to set this up properly. Uh, as you can see over here, if I move my cursor to anywhere on this video, let's go to a point where there's a frame. Notice that the burn in says that this is supposed to be 01000017. But if I take a look at the actual embedded reference that is according to the timeline, this is different. So my process for getting everything to work out properly, it doesn't change at all. What I'm doing is I'm shuffling this back to the very beginning. And then as I go back to the very beginning, if I bring my cursor back to zero, I can see the actual frame rate point that needs to be set in Studio One in terms of the time code, the SMPTE time code. Now, this is what it's indicating over here, that it's at zero, zero. So like we know from the last video, we can right click and we have the ability to set, or rather to set frames at cursor. Now, because I have an embed here, I know that this is going to be 59 and then we'll move over 5800, we will click okay. Now notice that these two match. And this is great because the minute I open up the video player, I can scroll my cursor down the timeline and these are going to match pretty much all the way up to the very end. They're going to match. And that is a great frame of reference to be able to have 
an actual embedded time code rate that is independent on if I have my, my actual song set to bars or seconds or whatever the case is. Now, in terms of the way that I like to set things up, if I'm working with a two-pop, which is pretty standard here for North American productions, I think it's a little bit different in the EU. Uh, if memory recalls, I believe they have a 10-second pre-roll. So instead of it being 59.58, it would be like 59.50 or something. I think maybe I've even seen it start at the 10-hour mark or something like that. But let's just keep things simple and say that we have our two-pop here. We want our first frame of action to start exactly on bar one and to start exactly at time code position zero one. So what I will do is first and foremost, there's a little trick that I like to use. If, if, if you open up a two pop, which is created in an exact frame duration, then I'm just going to set this to don't follow. And I'm going to do another video. I promise I'm going to do another video where I show you how to create a two pop because all it is is sync tone at a very specific level for a very specific duration. The confusing thing is the duration isn't necessarily seconds. It's frames because if we take a look at frame boundaries, you can see these frame boundaries over here, right? They're, they're different. Frame boundaries are actually different than if you take a look at minutes and seconds or if you take a look at bars. So for example, this one over here, we can park our cursor right here and I can go up. Let me locate my cursor. I can go up like this and you'll see over here, this is moving in exact frame boundaries just by doing this. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to make it so that my bar one happens exactly at the edge over here. And notice right now that bar two is not starting exactly at the edge of a frame boundary, which is zero one, which is exactly where I want it to start. The way that we do this is very easy. We set this to don't follow. And then all we need to do is make sure that our snapping is enabled. And if we make sure that this is set to, uh, we can set it to snap to events, for example, then all I have to do is open up my tempo track, hold down command, and notice that this just automatically snaps exactly to the end of the two pop, which ensures that it, it is exactly a two second duration at the very specific frame rate that we're working at, which is 23.976, otherwise known as 23.98. So now all that I wanna do is I'm gonna actually offset this. I wanna offset my bar to cursor so that my bar one is actually starting now at bar one and bar one also starts exactly, if we take a look at the video file, exactly at the 01000000, which is known as FFOA or first frame of action. So that is it. We have a visual indication now on the video player and we have the double indication of the burn-in, which came from the video editor. And then you have the choice of whether you want to have this set to frames, you can. But notice, like I said, ch check this out. When it's in seconds, a two-second two-pop at 23.976 or 23.98 is actually um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 0. 0, 0.002 in terms of seconds. Because if I was to change this from frames to seconds, let's zoom in really, really carefully here. And this is the confusing part, but like I said, I will do another video about creating your own slugs. If I change this from frames to seconds, notice that this over here, this is 2.002. .002. That is not exactly two seconds. If I wanted to go exactly to two seconds, this, we'd have to zoom out a little bit. I go one, two, let's see where that landed. This is two seconds, which is different than two seconds at a frame rate of 23.98. Hope I'm not confusing you, but this is important stuff. But once you understand it, and once you use this little hack, which allows you to basically snap your bar one to the end of the two pop, then you know that your Studio One session is set up exactly properly. Like I said, there are no issues whatsoever over here. I could work with this project and have peace of mind that wherever I park my cursor, 1308 or whatever the case might be, that these are going to be frame accurate. And then of course we have our musical grid context, which is happening up here. And this is at 120. And if you were at a different tempo, like let's say we wanted to be at a completely different tempo, maybe we want to be at 85 BPM, that's fine. We've just changed our actual BPM to be something different, right, on the exact bar boundaries, but our actual frame 
and our time code SMPTE frame rate and our time code embedded time code in the video and the time code that is basically stamped into Studio One's timeline, they're all matching up perfectly now. Anyways, that's it for this video. We will cover how to create a two-pop in another one. I'll catch you for more. Cheers.